All right, just got this thing dropped off the other day. A customer of mine wants it turned into a winch box, light duty winch box. So of course, another Holmes 440. These things are relatively available. But this one's kinda, this one's cool. It's a little bit newer one. So it's actually got a hydraulic, uh, hydraulic gearbox where a lot of these were PTO chain drive. And this one has a normal valve to go in and out instead of usually, let's see if we can zoom in here. I'm not gonna be able to. <laughs> yeah, usually right there, there's like a little shaft that goes in and out and that clicks it in and clicks it out to drive. So um, this one will be a little bit easier to build. Um, but yeah, so there it is. I'm gonna drag it up to the shop and see if I can't get it torched off. Um, just for the time being, that's all I'm gonna get done for a little bit, but at least I get to start on it. This one here is one I picked up. I'm actually pretty excited about this one. Yes, it is beat to tar, but it is a F350 four wheel drive, single wheel, one ton, 79. Um, not super rare, but a little bit more rare being a single wheel, four wheel drive in a wrecker format. So it's got just a narrow rear end. Doesn't have the biggest front diff, but it does have the Dana 60, not the Dana 80. 400 big block, four speed. I was gonna get it running, I had it in the garage, but uh, the ring gear is uh, out of it. So I can't get started to engage. So the tranny's gonna have to come out of this, but this one's cool. It's got a, a twin line 480, which would be the, the one larger than the 440. Um, obviously things, like I said, beat the tar, but I think we can get her going. Probably do like a, want to do like a six inch lift on it and some big 40s or something. But uh, it's pretty cool, it's sold in Minneapolis. Um, original blue top, but the bottom used to be brown uh, when it was sold from new. As far as I know, it's original engine, original transmission, but that one's gonna be down the road. Um, probably have a build, build series on this as well. Not, definitely not anytime soon on this one. But this one will be getting tore apart. The truck chassis junk, frames rotted, uh, everything's rotted. The drive shaft carrier bearings rotted out. I mean, it's totally gone. Um, engine does run though. I dumped a little gas in the carbon fired. So small block 350 and automatic, who knows, sell it, use it for something. Like I said, just gonna get the boom ripped off for now. And uh, yeah, so should be a good little project. Um, like I said, it's a good customer of mine. I've built him some stuff. I actually built him a snowcat just like my red one. So, uh, yeah. See if we can't whip this thing out and build it into something useful versus this. What's not useful? Stay tuned. Well, I got it off there. Uh, maybe six bolts holding it on. Just caught him with the torch. So there she sits, actually in relatively good condition. It's not all banged up, so it should be a good candidate. Also robbed off the D-rings because they're expensive and I can use them. So that'll be nice. And uh, hopefully when I get back from vacation, we can get back on this and get it done. Got to wait for a valve body with a remote. And um, I'm going to plumb it into a Bobcat um, power unit. So when you hook it up to the Bobcat, you can just hook in the plug-in, and then your remote will work for the remote valve body. So you'll have a remote winch. So that should work pretty slick. I'll probably come back to it in about a week or so. I just wanted to get it off there, so I didn't have to do it when I got back. So there she is. All right, we're headed over to Aiken with the 440 Homes unit. Uh, I opted to get it sandblasted before I start doing any pad work on it just because the paint is so um, so rusty and whatnot. So there's a shop over in uh, Aiken that's gonna blast it out for me quick. And then I should be able to get doing pad work without it being such a pain. Less grinding, should be able to make it go a lot quicker. So, stay tuned. All right, we're gonna have to abandon this project for a bit. I got most of the interior in it. Looks pretty nice. I can't really do anything more till the glass comes in, but she is coming along nicely. Nice and clean. Looks fairly good, I think. Just cold 
started it, so she's pretty, uh, just chugging. It's not a half choke. She does run nice, though. Okay, on to better things. We're gonna come over here to the flatbed. I picked up the boom, got it all sandblasted, and I ran out to Brainerd and picked up some metal. Quite the haul of metal, actually. Some for this project, most of it's for this project, um, and then some for other things around the shop, but they blasted it, did an okay job. Honestly, I'm not super, super happy with how they blasted it, but it is what it is, it's done. It's gonna be a lot easier to work on um, in this condition versus all of the paint on it. There's definitely some serious pitting on the back, and you'll see that. But uh, overall, you know, they missed, I don't know, they missed quite a few spots. Granted, I didn't take it apart for him, but I don't know. For the amount I paid, I think it should have been a better job. So, here's what it is. Got some tubing, angle iron, channel iron. Um, believe it or not, looks like a lot of metal, but it's not that much. And it will be mostly used for this. So, we're going to get it in the shop, get organized, and uh, get at it. Also, picked up a quick plate for it. Uh, I got that in the toolbox, but... Yeah, overall this looks a little bit easier to work with now that it's all blasted. All right, yesterday I went and picked up metal for this and I got back around, I don't know, one, two o'clock and I kind of got a little carried away and started working on it without recording. So this is what I've got. Quick plate, frame built around the, the boom and uh, got this here in the front. You can see how it wise out because it's gonna have a blade that kind of notches up in more of like a scoop fashion and then i got these square tubes so you can drop in two by two concrete spikes is what i call them and they spike in down underneath it for on ice and they stick down about two and a half inches so it bites in concrete black top or ice and you only need them in two spots because they bite so hard and then the front will just have a cutting edge but uh, yeah, so this is kind of what I got going. I gotta make uh, the, the orbit motor sits on the back side of this winch, so I gotta build an access hole through the quick plate just in case you ever have to change it. But uh, yeah, so here it is, working pretty, looking pretty good. We're gonna continue on it. Hopefully today I can get the blade built and it bolted down, so, and the access hole. And then really all it is is plumbing and some chain racks and it's done. A pretty quick little project. Like I said, this is not for me, it's just for a guy I build stuff for. So hopefully he's happy with it. I think, I mean, I'll be pretty happy with it. It's gonna be pretty sweet. So stay tuned for more. Hopefully get this uh, done here shortly before the snow because last I heard we're supposed to get like 12 inches, but I hope that's not the case. But if we do, we'll probably get some recovery video and I'll be able to get some footage of the green monster bombie in the deep snow, which would be kind of cool before spring. So there she is. Okay, I picked this thing out of here. <clears throat> Ended up cutting the relief hole. I was gonna torch it, but I had a hole saw. So then you can get to the orbit motor. Um, yeah, you can't get the whole thing out through the hole, but all you have to do is get it loose and be able to slide it through the hole and then out the front. I didn't wanna put a huge hole in there just because of where the quick plate hooks. Uh, with the skid loader, you don't have issues, but uh, yeah, if you take the two bolts out, slide the motor out, and you can fish it out of there without having an issue. And yeah, I could have mounted the quick plate back further, which ultimately was my plan. And then it turned out to being like this. Um, you would have had to mount that quick plate like three more inches. And then the whole thing just keeps, get, keeps getting longer, which we don't want to do that. <clears throat> so that's kind of how it ended up lining up. Honestly, I'm not super happy with it, but it'll be fine. That is flush and behind. Um, so the skids to your attachment shouldn't um, damage it unless you don't know how to run a skid loader. And where this is going, they know how to run a skid loader, so I'm not worried about them taking the end of the pump off. So, plus it's pretty flush and you could scoff it and it ain't gonna make a difference, so. Where this is going, it's not going to have a bunch of amateurs use it, so it'll be fine. Um, I don't know, I think it's still pretty clean looking though for just marking it with a marker and <clears throat> the holes in good spot. So I got this pretty much squared up where it needs to be. I got to mark the holes to bolt it down. I'm gonna hit it with the mag drill 
and drill the holes out quick. So then that'll be able to be mounted. The only other issue I'm gonna have is, might be a bit of a squeeze to get this up and out of here with the blade on the front. Cause the blade will end up coming in right in here about like the gusseting and support. So that gives you about two inches to spare to slide it ahead, which granted this is more than two inches behind. So I think it's gonna be more of a tip up and out operation. But like I said, you can make a drop right in, but you're just gonna get it longer and larger. And we're trying to make this compact and light. So if you want compact and light, it's gonna be maybe a little difficult to work on sometimes, but ultimately, I don't think you have to work on it ever. Just use it. These things have been around for a long time and they just always keep working, so. I got the front of the winch apart here. There's a band brake that's supposed to go in there uh, for when you're off the winch. It doesn't hold on the hydraulic motor to hold the pressure. There's like a little band that's adjustable, so I'm just waiting on that to put that back together. And then the cover was rotted off, that's why it's apart, so I have to uh, weld some nuts on these and get these backed out or drill them out or something and build a new cover but that is down the road we just need to get this thing mounted the blade put on still waiting on the valve body that should be here maybe this weekend and then uh, i'll get hooked to a skid and see how she works but overall that's not uh, not a bad unit there <laughs> should be uh should be pretty slick and then like obviously see this is all open this will get some plate and then down in here will get plated from the bottom up so it'll be like a tray so you can just toss chains in there and whatnot. Um, so I don't want to go crazy and put a bunch of boxes and stuff on it because then it gets heavy, but I will put a grate in the bottom. Or not grate, but a plate in the bottom so you can stack chains, snatch blocks, stuff like that in there. But otherwise, uh, yeah, it's not, not going to be too bad. That was really bothering me, but this is what it is. It'll be fine. Okay, we got it back on the rack. I had to plasma cut out some some plates that fill in this gap here, as you can tell. And then I can start building the blade. Um, I got all the holes drilled for the mounting brackets. That's pretty quick work with the mag drill. But yeah, here she is coming along as well. Uh, I'm just gonna say this, mind you, like these projects aren't built for YouTube. They're literally just what I do for a living. And I uh, just decided to start recording it and posting it. Um, and they're posted at like maybe a day or two days after the video is recorded. So it's all pretty much pretty recent and done fairly right away. So like I said, this is just my day to day. Um, did this before, just decided to start doing it for YouTube or just start recording it for YouTube. Um, so that's kind of the gist of what I got going on here all the time constant builds and i got some stuff in the works too that are scheduled to get done um not only my stuff but for other people so uh when you see this it's probably almost the same day posted or day before posted um i mean day after i took the video so it's all fairly recent stuff i'm just gonna keep working on this until it's the plumbing because i don't have the plumbing stuff yet but probably in the next maybe even yet this evening uh, posting it so it's uh, pretty pretty recent stuff nothing's really saved I don't have anything saved it's all what comes in on a daily basis so kind of just uh get an idea what we got going on all right I got my mess cleaned up I got uh, the start to the blade so you can see it's kind of like a like a bulldozer blade on the front and then it'll come up and line up to here and then go across and then it'll get a small cutting edge on the bottom. And then it'll get gusseted uh, through there. So and then you'll see where the concrete spikes will come out on each side for ice, because this won't bite in ice. I don't want to put teeth on it because when you're hauling it on the flatbed, it really raises hell on the flatbed. So we'll leave it smooth. Ice spikes will dig in for the ice or gravel or super hard ground, but just the dozer blade will be enough for dirt application. Uh, ice spike will go in there, have a little lever, goes up and down. So when you're not using it, you'll flip it over and then have a pin to lock it into place. Um, but overall, it's looking really nice. I'm not a welder, I'm a fabricator, so 
say what you want about my welds, but they're not gonna break. Um, that's kind of what we got going here. I think it should be good. It's kind of getting heavier than I want it to, but still gonna be much lighter than a actual heavy duty winch box. I have a, a 500 or 600 homes winch box that I built for myself years ago. And uh, once I get this done, I'll compare and you'll see the difference on why, uh, why you want a lighter one compared to the real heavy duty ones. But once again, this sets down in the middle and then the blade will be in the front of this and then the boom in front of that. And the boom is all manual, hand crank, and then the telescoping is just with a cam lock and you slide it out. So pretty basic, um, should, be, should be pretty good though. Hopefully he's happy with it. I don't see why he wouldn't be. I'm pretty stoked about it. So should be pretty sweet. Fab work is kind of just, I don't really draw anything out. I kind of just build it as I go. And um, was it here with the flappy, flapper disc and some primer? I think it was a pretty good job on pretty much just winging it. Like I said, this is the only thing I wasn't very happy about where the pump sat really close in here, but is what it is. That's what you get for not designing it and just flying off the seat of your pants. So not too bad. And then uh, this, like I said, will get plate in here all the way up. And then I left it with a little bit enough room so I can take that boom and kind of sit it down in here nicely and then slide it back into its spot. Um, that's that half inch plate that I put in there that gussets back into the mainframe. Um, you can kind of see it all have to get solid welded underneath, but pretty happy with it. I'll probably play it from here forward to gusset the the edge of the bottom probably put some gussets in here too before i do that so shouldn't have any issues with bending and um i mean this is only 3 16 it's not thick but anything from here up is just topsoil that it digs in the main bite is down low and once you strap that with the cutting edge it'll be uh, plenty strong i'm not going to be worried about that at all so hopefully and get this thing out of here sooner than later so I can move on to the next thing. Not rushing it, I want it to turn out good, but I also want it out of my shop. So, stay tuned. All right, I got the front on it, some D-rings. Gonna be a lot of grinding to get this thing smoothed out, but that is kind of what the base is gonna look like. And then the, the wrecker boom mounts in the middle of it. It's gonna get tie backs from somewhere in here back to the loader arms so it doesn't pull it out of the quick plate because winch boxes are notorious to do that because quick plates aren't meant to be pulled on, they're meant to be pushed against. So it will get tie backs to the boom. I'm fairly satisfied with how this came out. We're just using what I had around the shop. Should be plenty strong. Just got a, I took it out of the shop here because I got to flip it over and do some welding on the underside of it. Um, I'll probably incorporate chain boxes in the front here. I'm on the fence about leaving the middle open. I guess I'm going to leave that up to the owner. Um, just keep the weight down and then add, be able to clean it out. You just pressure wash it easy. And the bottom really doesn't do anything besides collect dirt and debris. Um, you do get a little float with it. With it uh, as a bottom but then you lose dig on the front so if you leave the bottom open it'll dig harder sooner uh, which honestly I think is a good idea so I'm going to leave that up to him and he wanted to keep the weight down so I'm not going to do any more gussets maybe an X gusset in the middle and leave it open just so you don't get any twist in it but I mean honestly it's pretty good and uh, the boom kind of comes up at an angle through here like this so there would be room to put some chain racks down in the front um, I would like to see it without the bottom honestly because I think the front blade would dig so much quicker and harder and faster without the bottom in it but an X brace probably wouldn't be the worst idea even though the boom apparatus is got a kind of an X or Y brace to it so it'd probably be plenty strong I, I, anything more than this is probably just overdoing it and just adding weight but um, it is pretty good, I think. Um, it's not super huge, it's nice and small. Um, the reason 
we got it so long is just because the way the boom is it's as, as short as i could make it but some of the winch boxes are just right here the downside of that is the boom on a skid loader only goes down so far therefore it only can dig in so far if you leave it long like this or have it long like this which most winch boxes are you can put the tie backs loose and then tilt your angle like this and it drives the front end and the chassis of the skid steer doesn't keep it up like the short little winch boxes do um, that for the length is nice besides the leverage on it when you're trying to haul it through terrain to get to where you're trying to go I put the tie backs in the middle um, only because I only have one gusset through the center which is going to be plenty strong I don't think you're going to bend it I can't go down and back like this because that boom mount comes up at an angle and I don't really want to weld anything into the boom um, so that's a quarter inch thick I don't think you're going to bend it you have to be pulling pretty hard um, it's all incorporated everything's tied together so I think it'll be fine and then I do have some cast D-rings that I'm going to put up here in the corners um, that flip. They're flipping because this is more of the mainframe. So if you really had to pull something really hard, you can do like a Y bridle between the both of them and get a nice square pull on the mainframe instead of on the front plate. Um, which, like I said, this is if you're trying to pull something really, really hard. Um, overall, I think it's going to be plenty fine. They wanted a light duty winch box, which... There's really no such thing. It's pretty hard to build a light duty, usable winch box that's not like super heavy. They're just, all of them are heavy because even a light duty winch box can do a lot of work. Um, this thing will do any farm implement, any skid loader, any forklift. Um, but they just wanted something lighter so they can get out into softer terrain with their skid loader without using the big winch box that they have. It's probably two to 3,000 pounds, maybe even more than that. You just lose all your float floatability with the skid but this will be cool i mean i don't have much of a use for something like this i get all the bombardiers it works fine but for me as a project help them out build something i wouldn't say help them out they're more than capable of doing it themselves but uh they're just busy so give me something to do but yeah so that's what you got I'm gonna flip it over the shop, do some gussets. I got a gusset underneath these angle irons between the bolt holes so I don't peel them up on a hard pull, which once again, probably never happen, but I'd rather build it, send it on its way and never see it again. So we're gonna build it to last. I'm gonna set the boom in it tonight, get a final video and, and uh, post it up. So we'll see what you think. I like the comments and questions and but yeah, this is what it is, quite the little winch box. Here's a good video of the underside. So this will get boxed in all the way up to the cutting edge to fill this all in so it doesn't pack with dirt. And so when you put pressure against this, it doesn't bend it. Then these are where them square solid stock come out from the bottom, the little spikes that spike into the ice or into the black top or cement, just to get a good bite down depending on where you're working. I gotta finish welding in here and then I gotta put some gussets between the bolt holes in here so this doesn't peel out. But yeah, as far as the welding goes, this is about the rest of it, just here on the bottom and then just a ton of grinder time. But uh, overall, I think the design is pretty good just for winging it. It's pretty clean. I don't see why it won't work. All right, there is a good look at what she's gonna look like. I got the boom telescoped about halfway out I just got two little bolts sitting in there just to hold it in place. But yeah, that's what I was talking about with leaving the bottom open. I mean, I don't see any downfall of it being open besides like if you're in mud and shit getting up in the winch, but at the end of that, it's just more surface area stuff digging in and packing it in where it needs to be. But I think up here is where I was thinking when I bolt the front of this down, I might make a little tray that bolts in there so you can drop chains in up in the front if I leave the center open, ultimately not up to me. But if I do plug the center, it's just gonna get a little little brace and then just some like uh, eighth inch, yeah, maybe 3 16 plate in there and there. And then I'll probably do like uh, expanded metal or something here so you have some, a nice platform to get out on top of. Um, this thing leaves plenty of room for the door to swing open on the skid loader where some winch boxes don't, it's really congested, but 
like I said, this is a light duty application one, which in most cases is all you need. I like how the blade turned out. It looked like it was gonna be really big in the shop, but honestly, it's pretty proportional to what it is. Uh, he should be pretty happy with it, I would think. I mean, I just built it as if it was mine and how I'd build it. This is that pump situation, see how it, it's pretty close to the cylinders on a cat, but on a bobcat, it's totally exposed. And this thing's rattled back a little bit because the holes are a little loose, so it'll be more flush, but it is very close. Um, but on a bobcat, which is what he runs, it's totally fine. This cat is probably the most congested quick tatch that you can get, so I'm not con concerned. If it'll work on this, it'll work on anything. Um, but yeah, so like my winch box is a lot bigger, and I tie it back to these. So I don't know if I'm going to put the tie backs on the mast or on here. Personally, I think I'm going to put them on there. I think it'd be better just because the mass I don't really want to, I don't know, don't want to well do it. And then if I ever change the boom and everything, the tie backs are still on the base. Because if I am correct, I'm pretty sure a Holmes 440, 480, 500, and 525 all use the same bolting holes. So if you ever wanted to build this a bigger winch box, you could drop a 500 or a 600 right in here and have the dual gearbox winch and there's enough room between the quick plate and the mounting plate if you take a 600 or a 500 and reverse it put the drums in the front that there is enough room um if anyone's familiar with them gearboxes but uh, or a 525 which is early which are the earlier models the drums are already in the front so you don't need to reverse them um we go on and on about that but uh yeah i don't know boomed out halfway I don't know, a lot of winch boxes don't have booms, but in some applications you do want a little lift. Usually with cars stuck on stumps or something that's like hung up or like, I don't know. With equipment, they don't really get hung up so much as just like sunk out here anyways. But like cars and pickups, like you might need to get some lift on them to get them up and over something. Or like out of ice holes, like if it breaks through the ice, like you need to get lift. You lift it up over the hole, so... The boom application is pretty nice where like most winch boxes are just like one shiv head or back there shiv head and you don't get no lift so ultimately we're gonna get lift with this um i mean a 440 homes i think is like comparable to like an eight ton wrecker i mean obviously boom out you're gonna lose a bunch of capacity but for what it is it'll, it'll do most anything it needs to do and i think it is pretty light because i lifted the arms up over the cab and it doesn't seem tippy or anything like the bigger winch boxes do. So once we get this completed, I'll put it side by side with my 600 winch box that I have, and you'll see the difference in weight and why these little ones are so much better for certain applications. Everything's based on application, but uh, I think this will be all for this video. See what you think, comment. I think it'll work pretty good. A lot of people want to put cages up here, which is fine. We could most definitely put a cage, but unlike most winch boxes, like most manufactured winch boxes, you run them from in the cab. And in this particular winch box and like most homes mod winch boxes, you have external controls because all skidsters have a live flow without you in the machine. So you can live flow the hydraulics to a valve body and you can have your in out out here. And which is really nice because then you can see what you're doing. The skid steer is in place. You run it from out here. You're not in the line of fire of the winch cable, besides being next to it. But, I mean, even with a wrecker, you're next to it. It's called just realize what you're doing and stop before something breaks or rig properly. So, honestly, everyone's like, well, you got to put a cage, cage, cage. Yeah, I get that, but also be safe. So, like I said, I go on and on with that. But this particular one's going to get a live flow valve. So, you'd be able to run it from both sides outside of the machine. So, nobody in the machine. And it will have a remote... So you can run this thing from 50, 60, 70 yards away from it. So you're totally in the clear. Um, I personally don't like winch boxes that you run from in the cab of the skid steer because you have la lack of visibility on what you're doing. And if you work alone, you just you just can't um, really see your rigging if something's twisted. Um, I prefer to run these things outside of the machine. All the ones I've worked with or had, you run them on the outside of the machine. So that's kind of my two cents on the screen. And if you're ever trying to move one of these things in the dark or don't going down trails, this isn't blocking your visibility so bad. So I just do away without the screen. Um, teach their own on that. But in this application, you don't run it from in the machine. So you don't need a screen. But uh, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, I think it's pretty good. 
I'm gonna put her in the garage for the next couple days because we're supposed to get uh, six, eight inches of snow and I'm not gonna have time to work on this. So I wanted to get it to this point. And uh, yeah, so I think it turned out pretty sweet. Pretty happy with it. I got about two and a half days in it. I got a lot of welding yet and grinding to do, but for the most part, it's pretty, pretty simple. I just gotta run a couple hydraulic lines, uh, 12 volt power for the remote. And then I might throw some, some LEDs on the front or something. I don't know, we'll see, see how crazy the guy wants to get on it, but I don't know if I'll paint it or if I'll bring it somewhere to get the rest of it blasted and painted. I guess we'll see, but that's minor, minor details. I'm excited to get this thing out and do some winching with it because I think it'll be pretty impressive. I mean, all winch boxes are impressive, so should be good. That's all I got. <laughs>